But in speaking to um, uh, my one of my staff pastors on Sunday, I looked around in our second service, and I would dare say the average age of the church that was present was about 31, 32 years old. That's and um, oh my God. All, these, all these young people that at one time were in church, because of this pandemic, they now have questions. They want to know what's going on. They have enough Bible in them and enough scripture in them to cause them to become curious and ask questions. And when they come back to the church, we've got to be ready to give an answer. And I feel like that we're, we're doing that and we're taking that opportunity. And um, man, God's just blessed. Uh, the reality is if the percentage of people who are what I would call our regular folks, if they came back right now, I would be in trouble. <laughs> I would be in uh, five services uh, like tomorrow if they all started coming back. And the truth is, I really believe uh, prophetically that the year 2021 is going to be the year of the local church, that God is going to breathe on the yes. local church again. And I've been, I, I've been reading this story again there in Ezekiel where the Valley of Dry Bones and God asked Ezekiel, he says, can these bones live? And I love Ezekiel's response. He said, Lord, only thou knowest. God, only, I don't know, you know. <laughs> and he said, you know, God tells him, says prophesy to the bones. And the thing is he didn't prophesy to the bones in faith. He prophesied the bones in obedience because he didn't know if they could live or not. He had told God, I don't know if they can make it. <laughs> but he just began to prophesy to dead dry things in obedience to what God had spoken to him. And so I think as, as, as pastors, as leaders, as, as men and ladies, people in the church right now, We've got to decree and declare the word of God, not necessarily yes. because we have faith, but because out of obedience. This is what God's word says. And so I'm going to declare the word of the Lord regardless of what I see. And, you know, we know the story there in Ezekiel, many do it. And it says, and there began to be a rattling or a shaking in the bones. And um, I, I'm really just, I, I'm, I'm hearing that, I'm seeing that with guys that I talk to. And there's a generation that grew up in the church that walked out. Yep. And now yeah. they're walking back in. And we better have a right now word for them. And because this pandemic has shaken them. And when God starts rattling things and when God starts shaking things, he doesn't do it to destroy, he does it to put it together. But because we're not comfortable with shaking and we're not comfortable with rattling, um, we want to connect it our way instead of letting God rattle the pieces back into yes. place yes. as they come in. And so that's kind of what we're experiencing in our little corner of the world. Um, you know, and I'm also finding for us people that have believed the word of God and have and acted on the word of God in this time and this season has seen um, God do incredible things. And so we've had our fair cases of COVID. Um, I've had it run through our staff. Um, I, I had it, I didn't know I had it. I, I was one of those who was, I had no symptoms. And, um, but because of a local physician here who uh, I'm in a relationship with, they had told me to come test every 10 days, and I did. And then on the 30th of the day, they took a blood test and found out, okay, somewhere you have the antibodies, you had this sickness, and I never yeah. knew it. Never knew um, and so we've had others in the, the, the church that have experienced it and had it. And so I'm not dismissing um, the, the, the virus itself. But what I am saying is in the middle of the pandemic, people have had faith. People have been faithful. Sure. Um, people have, um, seen God be faithful to them. Um, and so it's been amazing. It, it, it really has what the enemy has meant for harm at mercy gate. God has turned for good.
What I've seen, I've seen in, in some um, studies back in Great Britain, which Great Britain describes itself as being post-Christian. So in other words, it's no longer a Christian country, it's beyond being, a, and boy, that is the truth. And it seems like we're trying to do the same thing to America. But what they discovered is that online, the online search for church and the things of God in Great Britain has risen 25%. A country that doesn't even give God the time of day. In fact, when all this pandemic broke out in America, the big angst was, you know, should the churches remain open? We should be able to worship. That's our constitutional right. In Britain, the church was never mentioned. It didn't come into the equation whatsoever. But what they said was that we need to have the pubs open. The pubs need to stay open at all costs. And the battle in Britain was over the pubs, whereas the battle in America has been over the church. In that environment, 25% increase in young people online looking for God, looking for church, looking for something to answer the questions of their mind. My dad used to say what we stands there when he preached, and it's so powerful. Two men look out of prison bars. One saw mud, while the other saw stars. And if you're watching us today, Pastor, and all you can see is mud, I've got, I've got great news for you. Lift up your eyes just a wee bit, and you can see the potential that I believe that out there, faceless to you at the moment, but if you can address them and talk to them and say to them, listen, I know you haven't understood all this is going on. You may have lost a loved one. Your grandmother may be isolated for the last six months and you haven't seen her. But we have an answer in Jesus. And if we can formulate a means by which we can talk to them and say to them, listen, God is in control over all this stuff and point out plagues of the past that God was in. I think you'll find that, as you are finding, that young folk will come and say, I need, I need this now. And um, I'm just so excited. I, I, I have a whole bunch of pastor friends, and we have many guests on our program. And I'm, I'm watching a pattern establish all the way across from the beginning of the pandemic. You know, if pastors called me and says, oh my goodness, what will happen to the finances of the church? Most churches I know, their finances went up. And they were amazed at that and they were rejoicing in that. And then as this thing dragged on, people began to take the habit of staying home in their pajamas and watching four or five different shows. They could, you know, they, they, they could go to Jensen Franklin's Praise and Worship or Hillsong's Praise and Worship and then hear um, Jensen talk or someone else talk and then add a wee minute at the end for their own church and, and send their tithes and offerings. And so pastors are coming to me now saying, will he ever come back? What's going to happen? I believe with all my heart that we could fill our churches with brand new people that are out there just now worried, worried, sick, wondering what's going to happen, if they're going to be next. And they are ripe for someone with a positive rhema to come into their lives and say, hey, God's going to see you through this thing. You're going to be okay. And I think you're finding, I think that's what God's doing at Mercygate. It's amazing. We are, we are finding that to be so true. And, you know, our online presence jumped dramatically. Uh, we've, we've had over a million views with an average of 37 minute watch time. That oh. doesn't happen. People are on two to three minutes and they're off. Sure, and sure. Our, ours has went through the roof. And um, I just think people are looking for hope. You know, um, the other day I went to get my hair cut and this young lady came up behind um, the lady cutting my hair. And she said, can I wash his hair? And I was like, you know, hold up. <laughs> and uh, so my the lady who cuts my hair said, sure. And so she went over to wash my hair and she said, aren't you the pastor of Mercy Gate Church? And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I want to know how I can be sure that my 14-year-old and my 11-year-old know Jesus. 
Oh and I said, well, I said, the question isn't, is your 14 year old and your 11 year old know Jesus? The question is, do you know Jesus? Cause it has to start there. Sure. She began to tell me how she was raised in church and she began to tell me what her grandmother taught her about end time events. Yeah. And, um, she said, I think this may be it. And I said, that's, that's immaterial. I said, it doesn't matter if it is or isn't. We've got to be ready for Jesus any moment. Any moment. I said, so yeah. the way your 14 year old and 11 year old is going to know Jesus is based on how do you know Jesus? And right there over a wash bowl to get my hair washed, I was able to pray for this young lady who hadn't been to church in forever. But she had enough word in her that that word would not return void. Yeah. And it began to speak to her. Uh, we've had people walk in the church and they told me, they said, you know, I'll go up and introduce myself to them and say, hey, I'm Pastor Gibson. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know. We've been watching you for about six to eight weeks uh, before we finally decide to visit. Yeah. And so people, we don't understand that right now one of your biggest PRs, one of your biggest outreach, really the, the tip of the spear of evangelism is this broadcast medium. Yes, it it's is. not the totality of the spear or the totality of evangelism, but it is the tip of the spear. Sure. And people are people are not just turning it on right now. They're really tuning in. Yeah. 